Hello and welcome to this podcast. My name is Emma and this is a podcast where I talk about everything that I knit. And today I have two finished objects and three works in progress. And I'm going to start with what I'm wearing. So in the last episode I talked about a sewing project that I had and it was the Musetti's dress and this is what I'm wearing. So it was the third one that I made that I was making and this is the second one that I made. Um, so this is the white one and yeah, here it is. <laughs> I also made the buttons um, in ceramics, but I'm not so sure about them. Um, but those were the buttons that I had. You can see there's a little bit of red around it. Yeah, I'm not sure about the buttons. I'm not wearing it so much because I should um, be underlying it. I think it's called under the skirt um, because it's quite a bit see-through. <laughs> so yeah, um, but I do like it. I like the pattern, although the white one, I'm not wearing it so much. Um, but yeah, I'm wearing it. I do like um, the, the look of it now that I'm wearing it. <laughs> Um, so let's start with the finished object in knitting. I only have knitting today. The first one that I have is a cardigan that I made for my son. So this is the Calendula Kids cardigan and I'm just closing the button so I can show, I can show it to you a little bit better. Here it is. I'm going to close all, to close all the buttons. It's gonna look a little bit better. Here it is. So, as I said, this is the calendar like kids cardigan from Sandra Magalis, and I've used the yarn um, Duo from um, Rosarios Cuatro, and I held it triple because it's a fingering white yarn, light fingering white yarn, and I held it triple and to make this nice fabric. And I put some wooden buttons on it. So I made the size three to four years old, so it's too big, too long, too large, everything. <laughs> um, last time I showed it to you, I hadn't done the button band, which I have now, but my son's been wearing it uh, a few times without the button bands, with all the, the the ends that I didn't weave in yet. <laughs> and he liked it, but he couldn't close it. He was asking to close it. <laughs> anyway, now that I finished it and blocked it, I wanted to show it to you before he could wear it. And yeah, so I did a few modifications. Um, so the first one, I talked a lot about it in the past, in like two episodes ago, I think. But I didn't cast on at the top um, of the collar. I cast on just underneath, in, underneath it, um, so without the ribbing, and picked up later on the ribbing, um, the stitches for the ribbing, so it would be a bit more sturdy. Um, did an Italian bind off for the collar, the cuff, and the button band. And I added some short rows at the back, so the collar is a bit higher at the back of the neck and I had to continue quite a bit after I finished the raglan increases um, to arrive at the right length otherwise it was way too short so I don't know if you can see it but I stopped around here and continue all this without any increases um, I haven't checked checked my gauge to see if it was um, if I had more rows than the gauge in the pattern I ha haven't checked that I don't know it might be that and oh yeah and the last modification that I made was the type of increase that I made for the um, uh, the raglan and I think in the pattern it calls for um, knit front and back and I did what did I do the increase where you pick up 
the strand between the two stitches um, for right slanted increase or left slanted. So that's the three modifications that I made, I think. Otherwise, I knit everything to pattern and I love it. It's now a bit warm, <laughs> but he's gonna be able to wear it. Like, he's wearing it um, like early in the morning or for the evening when it gets colder. Not during the day because it's way too warm for him, but um, yeah. And I think he's gonna be able to wear it for a long time because it's a big one. And I'm so, I don't know, I really like it. And I really like knitting for um, my toddler. He likes knitting. He keeps asking me if I'm knitting him some socks, so I might have to do that <laughs> um, at one point. But he really likes it. He was really excited about it. So that makes me really happy to knit things for him. So that's it for this cardigan. Um, I talked a lot about it um, in uh, two episodes ago, so I'm not going to talk too much about it today. And the second work, uh, the second finished object that I have is a shawl for my mom, and I finished it, and I'm so happy about it. So how do I show it to you? So I blocked it. It took a lot of room to do that, <laughs> but um, in a night it was uh, it was dry. So I'm using one strand of silk mohair for that. And so this is the beginning of it with a little bit of lace. It's an asymmetrical shawl. This is the lace part, which is really small. Then I increase with small pieces of, um, of color. And then I put more and more until the end. And I only have the two ends to weave in. And I weaved all the other ends in. It took forever. <laughs> it was really long to do. But I did it. And I will finally be able to gift it to, to my mom. Um, I've been knitting on this shawl for the past four years. So I'm so happy I finally finished it and I really like the the result. Um, I don't know like I'm not sure I can show it to you currently like I hope you can see it. And it's so light and so warm and so comfortable. And I hope she's going to like it. I'm going to gift it to her soon because she's taking our son um, on holidays. So I'm going to gift it to her at this moment. And yeah, the first part with the lace is done in stuck in a stitch and the rest is in garter stitch and that's it i just wanted to show it to you finished but i haven't used a pattern for that um, i talked a lot about it in like two episodes ago too so i'm not going to go back to all of this but if you're interested a little bit more about how i did that um, the construction the kind of like design and elements and stuff. You can go and, and watch the, not the last episode, but the one before. Because in the last episode, I hadn't done enough progress. Well, I had, but I wove the, end in, the ends in and did like this much. So I thought it wouldn't be really interesting to show it to you at that time. But um, yeah, now that I finished it, I can show it to you. And other than I'm so happy about it, <laughs> there's not much more um, to, to say about this one. And now I have three works in progress. One that you've already seen and I'm going to start with this one and the two others that are new. Okay. 
So the first one that I have is the Sumac Pullover from Orlansuch. I feel like I've shown it to you like a million time, times, but maybe not. And I have done some progress on it. <laughs> so last time I showed it to you, I think had one sleeve done here. And I still have some part of the body left to do. And I'm here on the second sleeve. So on the second sleeve, I have done all the decreases and now I'm just going to um, knitting straight, straight to the end. Um, I have to say I'm not enjoying so much anymore knitting on this stamper, but I want to have it finished. Um, I've already spent so many hours knitting on this, dyeing the yarn, re-knitting it, that I love the pattern, I love the yarn, I just have to go through it finish it and then I'll be really um, happy to wear it but I think I've spent so much time knitting on this that I'm kind of a little bit tired of knitting this and I still have it in my mind I mean I put it aside for a, a few months um, when I didn't know what to do with the yarn if I had to do to dye some more etc but I'm still I enjoyed knitting on it a lot last summer I think but yeah I don't have much left like the body is almost done and yeah that's it um, I think also it's a little bit hard on my hand when I'm knitting on it and so because it's small needles with rustic yarn and I don't know, it's just, it's a little bit hard on my hand, so it hurts a little bit here, like when I'm knitting on it. And so I'm trying not to knit too much on it, but still enough so I make some progress. But yeah, I just wanted to show you this sleeve. Um, I hope that by the next episode I will have finished the sleeve and gone back to the body. Because I'm trying to knit a little bit on it. Um, every day so I have some progress but I don't like I'm not too sick of it like if I, I don't want to knit too much on it every day and I'm allowing myself to have more like other projects but I feel like this was kind of the ones that I had in my mind for a long time because I, I started it a few years ago um, same as this shawl and so those are the kind of projects that I wanted to finish and to get done with. Um, this one, because I really like it, it just takes so much, it took so much time to knit, that's it, because it's so big and such a small needle. And um, I wanted to gift it to my mom because I already told her that I was knitting this, I already showed it to her. So I really wanted to be able to gift it to her so she could use it. And I had it on my needles, I had it in my mind, like I can't just leave it aside and not think about it anymore. <laughs> um, and it's a bit the same with this jumper. I know I have it, I know I will be happy to wear it. So I kind of want to um, finish it so I don't have it on my needles anymore. And I don't want to frog it because I know it will be, um, I will like the finished object. And yeah, I know it's like most of the time I'm, as, as much as process knitter as um, I like the finished object, but for this one, I think I will like more the finished object than the process of knitting it. I have this left of the yarn, of the skein, of the last um, skein that I dyed, and then I have one, I think I have 50 grams left, or 100 of the last, uh, skein, I'm not sure anymore, and I've, I'm kind of thinking now that it will be maybe not enough. I'll see. I'm not thinking about that now. I'm just thinking about finishing the sleeves, getting back on the body, and we'll see then <laughs> what happens with the yarn. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for this one. 
I'm glad I started the second sleeve. I Once I finished the first one, I was like, okay, I will put it aside for a while and pick up the stitches for the sleeves a bit later, the second sleeve a bit later. And I just thought I have to do it because otherwise I won't knit on it. <laughs> and it's really simple. Um, I can knit a round or two a bit here and there, so it's easy to pick up. Oh, and the yarn that I'm using, but I've talked so much about it already in the past few episodes, but um, it's a yarn, it's not a brand or anything, it's a yarn that I bought um, to a lady who, had, uh, who was hand spinning it from the sheep that were on this island. So um, it's a blend of different, um, of different breeds and it's rustic and I love it. Then, with all this, I needed something simple, like kind of sock knitting, <laughs> that I can bring anywhere and I know what to do with it and it's simple and I can just pick it up. And since I didn't have that with the socks that I have at the moment on my needles, I thought that I would start a Sophie scarf for my son. I've had this yarn in my stash for a few years, I knew um, for Quite a while that I wanted to do a scarf for my son because he's always taking mine and he likes it and this is the scarf I'm just going to show you the yarn so this is Katya yarn um, this is I think they stopped uh, this uh, this type of yarn but this is cotton and merino And I love it, but I knew that I wouldn't really wear it. I had only one skein of 50 grams. And because um, I bought it at, at a yarn festival and the second skein was for a friend. And she's knitting the same scarf. And we were supposed to knit it together. It was last year and she started way before me and I thought that it was time for me to do it. Um, anyway, it's just a basic Sophie scarf and you can see the yarn here. So I put the stitch marker at the beginning so I remember like it's easier to remember on which side I have to do the increases. Um, this is the top, like this stitch marker is to Oops, show the top of the scarf here and the last one is because for the decreases um, I don't want to like have to really look at it and it's harder to see the decreases like the decrease row uh, compared to the increase row I think like for me so I put a stitch marker to know and this is a stitch marker so I know when I'm going to block it that I can like do the pointy part here. <laughs> anyway, um, I really like this yarn. I like the, the stripes that it makes and it's really soft. And I think that my son will like it. He saw me knitting on this and he asked me if I was knitting some socks for him. <laughs> and I was like, this doesn't look like socks. No, I'm not. <laughs> But yeah, I already said it, but he wants me, like, he, he keeps asking me if I'm knitting him so, so, some socks. So I'm knitting a scarf for him. And like in the morning, when, um, when we leave in the morning, sometimes it's a little bit cold on the bike. So he's still wearing a, a scarf in the morning. So he's going to be able to wear it even in the summer. And I didn't like I weighted the yarn uh, to ensure that I was in the middle like I stopped the increases when I was halfway through the ball so I had 51 grams I went to 26 grams so I had one gram left <laughs> to be sure that I could finish it because otherwise I don't have any yarn that looks like this one so it would be a bit hard uh, to do something that would look like this so this was my very easy project. Um, although I 
had to stop at some point because I wasn't at home and I was like, I'm going to need too far. I'm going to go like further than the 25 grams. So I kind of stopped. Um, but other than that, such an easy project. Oh, and I wanted an easy, an easy project because I was going to the movies and I wanted to bring something with me. And usually I bring some socks. And I thought that I would bring this one. It was such a bad idea. I did like six rows and then I was like, I have to count. Am I at the eighth row or not? Do I have to do an increase or not? And I didn't know. And I couldn't look at it because there was no light. <laughs> so I knit on it for like five, ten minutes and then I couldn't knit anymore. So not a good idea. I could have thought about it, but I just brought the easiest project that I had and where I didn't have to look at it to knit on it. But couldn't knit on it anyway. <laughs> I did knit on it during like um, during the commercials at the beginning. So I had a bit more time than five or ten minutes, but once the movie started, I couldn't continue anymore. But anyway, I had it for um, the waiting at the beginning of the movie, so it was okay. And the last work in progress that I have is a pair of slippers. So those are the double slippers from Sunless Garn. Here it is. Um, if you've already seen this pattern, I've watched uh, a few episodes ago, I talked about it because this is my second pair of slippers that I'm knitting from this pattern. And this is the way it looks. So we start here and it's instead of knitting, so I'm knitting, sorry, I'm, I'm just going to talk about the yarn and then I'm going to talk about the construction. So I'm knitting it um, with Alaska from Drops. Um, because it's easier for me to find the, the Santa's gown yarn that is recommended. And, but it's exactly the same. It's um, wool, same weight yarn, everything similar. And so instead of just casting on here some stitches, joining in the round and then sewing at the end. I did a Judy's Magic cast on. Then we knit in the round until the middle here. And so, how can I show it to you? It's gonna be folded and one part is going to be to be inside the other. It's gonna be felted slippers. That's why it's so big. <laughs> so it's going to look like this. I fold, it's for my dad, I don't know if I said that, but I'm knitting the 40-42 size. Not the biggest, but the one before. Anyway, that's his foot size. And um, I did the right number of stitches here, but knit two rows left here less here, sorry, um, because this is the, like the, the hole um, for the ankle. And my dad has really thin ankles, so I did two rows less, so it would be a bit smaller, so it would, um, it would fit better around his ankle. And I did two rows more around, like that for the foot part, so it's still the same length as uh, what is written in the pattern. Otherwise it would be a bit shorter. Um, what I'm going to do too is that I, I'm going to knit two rows left, two rows less <laughs> for the inside part, like I did for um, the ones I knitted for myself, because it fits better um, inside. So it's not wrinkly inside. Um, and there's no, like, there's a bit less um, fabric on the inside than on the outside, so it fits better. 
so that's what I'm going to do and then that's it and it's gonna be felted so I don't like we can but I think we can still see it a little bit what I modified is the type of decrease that we made that we make for the the toes so we are supposed to knit two together like at the middle like for socks really like the toes for socks but here you can see it's really the same it's really similar so for the decreases here uh, to have si to have symmetrical decreases I made like knit two together knit one then knit one again and then slip slip knit instead of knit two together again like it's written in the pattern um, what else I've been wearing mine quite a lot and I find them so comfortable I in mine I had some um, alpaca in it so it's a little bit more like floppy and drapey I hope those ones are gonna be more sturdy and I think it's really good because when I knitted mine I show them them to my dad and I've never knit him anything because He's the kind of person who has um, memories of scratchy yarn when he was a child and so he's not so keen on having knitted item now which is a bit of a shame because it's so nice to wear wool <laughs> um, anyway and he's not really uh, like he doesn't get cold easily and for example like he wouldn't wear like big woolly jumpers um, he's already got a hat that fits him that he likes so why and it's soft it doesn't itch him so why would I try to knit him one when he already has one that is perfect for him um, and take the risk that he tells me that it's a bit too itchy or a bit too warm or I don't know um, he's already got some mittens for the bike and I don't think he would wear socks knitted socks so i've never knit him anything and so when he told me that he um liked the slippers and that it would be really useful for him i said okay i'm knitting you <laughs> a pair of slippers and i don't know how it's called but um you know in, in in the shoes when it's a bit too narrow and you have the big toe going on the inside and so the um it's like instead of being straight the big toe is going a bit on the inside and this here is going a bit on the outside um, he has that so with this kind of slippers um, it would be wide enough it would be the, the right width for his feet so it would be perfect it wouldn't um, like push his uh, toe on the inside of the foot so I think it's going to be really comfortable for him to wear that so I'm knitting those ones and I'm going to wait to see him to be able to felt him um, so it's exactly the the right size for his feet um, and he's gonna be I, I, we're gonna do exactly the same as for mine um, so I'm going to put them in the washing machine felt them and then he's gonna put them around his feet while it's still a bit damp uh -huh. and so it's gonna dry with right form and around his feet so next time I show them to you it might be it will it should be finished <laughs> and um, then I'm gonna take I think a, a photo or maybe a video of him like once they're gonna be felted but it's not gonna be in the, in the next podcast because I won't have them anymore uh, because once it's gonna be felted he's gonna go um, away with them and take, bring them home <laughs> um, so yeah and this is the second pair I'm making and the third pair I have to make another one um, throughout the summer for my son because he needs them for school he needs to keep a pair at school and so I want to make one bigger for him um, his, like his foot size at the moment is one size smaller than the smallest size of this pattern so I may try to like see a bit 
um, how I do that uh, but I don't think it's gonna be such a problem I think the hardest part will be to make him wear them while they're still a bit damp <laughs> I don't think he's gonna like that <laughs> and he won't understand that it's to make the right um, form to make them dry um, around his feet so he won't understand why I'm making him do that so that's gonna be the hardest part um, but I want to make them a little bit special either with like bare ears um, on top of them or um, different colors I'm not sure yet I'll have to see I have different colors and I think that's the beauty of like this kind of pattern we can make many many um, different things with uh, the colors and it can be really nice so yeah that's the next project that I have that I have to do this summer <laughs> have to finish it <laughs> this summer so he can have some slippers for school and I think that's really nice that they can wear slippers at school like at home they're still really small so feeling a bit cozy at school is going to be nice I think and this is such an easy pattern it's really easy it's really quick to do um, yeah and also I've made a process making video about the first one that I made so if you're interested or if you want to understand a little bit more the construction and how it's made um, I think I can put the the video like a link on the screen and I will link it down below too in the description box if you're interested about that And also, um, once I finish them, I can show them a little bit better to you. But I think it's a pattern where you can easily adapt it to your feet. So if you have really tiny ankles, for example, um, you can make it the whole smaller or uh, bigger ankles, you can make the whole bigger. If you have a really high instep, um, you can have it like knit more stitches like cast on more stitches to have a higher um slipper and if you have um a really small in step you can knit cast on less stitches and you can really adapt it to the morphology of your feet um which is really interesting so yeah i think it's a well any slippers i guess but um those are the only ones that i made but i really like that you can adapt it uh, perfectly to fit your feet and that was it for the wax in progress and I really wanted um, to knit other things um, those two last projects were really easy ones I knew that they would be um, really uh, quick to make so what I wanted to have something ready to cast on and so I made a swatch but um, also when I like in the past few weeks month I kind of went through my stash and did a bit half and half so I knitted from my stash and from new yarn and like really old stash um, yarn that I've had for years and that felt really good to be able to use this yarn that I've had for years I didn't know what to do with it I bought it for uh, a project that I had in mind at that moment but I wouldn't knit it I wouldn't knit this project now because well I have learned a lot um, in the last few years and so I I wouldn't knit the same projects now that I did then what I did in like a few years ago anyway so um, I went through my stash to look at what I had, um, the different quantities that I have and the different yarns, etc. And I found um, a brushed alpaca, brushed alpaca silk from Drops. So many years ago, I knitted a cardigan. Um, I could have brought it down. It's from a magazine um, from Fildach and it's uh, made with four 
strands of brushed out well of a yarn similar to the brushed alpaca silk but in the pattern it, it called for a yarn that had um, uh, like synthetic it was uh, partly a synthetic yarn so I wanted something um, unnatural so that's why I took um, uh, the brushed alpaca silk which is alpaca and silk <laughs> and um, Anyway, and so I liked it so much. I don't have it anymore because um, at that time I was still learning how to knit, learning about the gauge and what to do with a swatch that wasn't right. I didn't know what to do at that time, I think. So it was a bit, it was too big. It was way too big. It was um, falling from my shoulders all the time. And so I, um, a few times when my mom came, um, she needed a, a cardigan or jumper, so I um, she she took this one, and it did fit her a lot better than me. Um, she's way taller than me, uh, and so I gave it to her because it was really nice. It looked really nice on her, and she would be wearing it a lot more than than me. So I gave it to her. Anyway. So once I finished this cardigan, I thought that I really liked the yarn and that I would need uh, another jumper or something else with it. So I bought some more yarn and I bought 10 balls or 8 balls, I think, 8 or 10, I can't remember, of the brushed alpaca silk and 5 more of another color and I don't know what I wanted to do with it. And so I took it and I looked on Ravelry and um, did some research to see what kind of pattern I could make. And I found the Cumulus blouse from Petit Knit. And I thought that it would be really nice. And so I made a swatch and here it is. And I love this rust color. And I got gauge so I can start it and I can't wait to start it. Um, I really, really, really love this color. So I really want to knit it, but I thought that I would at least finish the sleeve from my sumac pullover, um, put the body back on the nails, and then maybe I can cast on this one. But I know that if I cast on this one before I finish at least the second sleeve of the sumac pullover, I won't finish it <laughs> and I will only want to knit on this one. So I'm kind of like telling myself that once I finish, once I'm close to finishing the stomach pullover, I can cast on this one, but I can't wait. Um, while knitting on it, I don't think I will really like knitting with this yarn. Um, it's not really elastic. It has silk, alpaca. I'll see. <laughs> but I love the color, I love the finishing fabric. So here it is. Here is my swatch. And I have so many more ideas. I have so much more yarn that I want to use now um, that is in my stash. And I found it so nice to be able to like knit from the stash that I I've had for so long. And finally using it. I don't have like a really big stash, but the yarns that I had for too long, I kind of start thinking that I wouldn't know what to do with it anymore. So yeah, anyway, I'm starting to do that and to look a bit more through my old stash to find some projects. Um, like step by step, not everything at once and I'm not saying that I'm not buying new yarn anymore because I love that too and I love being able to buy a yarn for a specific project that I have so I will continue to do both but here is my swatch for my next project um, that was a really long explanation for a swatch I feel <laughs> but yeah I, I'm really excited about it too so that's why I wanted to show it to you but that's it for today. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I will see you next time. Bye.